Hi, honey. Are you busy right now? Hello, dear. I'm about to head into a meeting. So you can't spend time with me? I have ten minutes before the meeting starts. What can I do for you, dear? It's okay. I'll handle it myself. Ten minutes won't be enough. What's going on? You can tell me. Well, it's nothing major. I just saw something I really, really want. I wanted you to come see it with me to see if it's a good fit. But since you're busy, I guess I'll have to let it go. Oh, what is it that you want? You can have anything you desire. It's not a big deal. I recently bought a dress and it would be perfect with a beautiful red bag to match. I found a red bag that complements the dress perfectly. Is that all you want? To make the outfit even more perfect, there's also a pair of Louboutin shoes, another jewelry set, new makeup, and some other accessories I need. That's all I need. That's all you need? <laughs> Can't I have it all? Of course, dear. Take the black card I gave you yesterday, and the password is your birthday. I'm sorry I can't take you to the mall, but go with your friend and buy everything you want. How do we get to the shopping mall, then? Huh? Oh, right. Take any car you want. Thank you so much, honey. I'll enjoy it. I'm glad you love it. The meeting is about to start, so I have to go now. Have fun, dear. I love you. I sure will. Bye, babe. Layla, why haven't you come home yet? Oh my, didn't I tell you I would be sleeping over at my friend's house? No, you didn't mention that. Maybe I forgot. Tonight I'm going to my friend's house to sleep, and I'll be back tomorrow morning. Whose house is it? Anna or Emma? No, it's not them. It's one of my new friends. You don't know them. Which friend are you talking about? Is it a guy or a girl? And can you share their address? Is there anything I should know? Oh my god, Mike. You're being overly skeptical. It's just a friend. Don't overthink it. I'm not trying to be suspicious, but you never mentioned this friend before, and I'm just concerned about your safety. Could you at least share the address so I know you're safe? What could possibly happen? Everything will be fine, okay? You don't need to worry. I can't help but worry. You're spending time with people I've never met. Are you suggesting I need your permission to make new friends? Are you trying to control my life? That's not what I mean, Layla. Then what do you mean? Do you not want me to have new friends? Are you forbidding it? How dare you? I'm not forbidding anything, Layla. I would never think that way. I trust you. I'm just concerned about your well-being. Listen, Mike. I'm your wife, not a child. I can make my own choices. You can't control me. Since we're married, I hope you trust me completely. I never question you when you spend time with your friends. I hope you'll respect my privacy, too. I understand, Layla. I shouldn't have been so intrusive. But you should have told me in advance. It would have alleviated my worries. You're talking too much, Mike. If I want to, I'll tell you. And if I don't, you can't force me. Even if I go out with friends of the other gender, you shouldn't try to control me. What? Going out with friends of the other gender is not a problem. But you should know your boundaries. You're a married woman, and too much time spent with other men may raise eyebrows. And sleeping with someone of the other gender is out of the question. That's not what I meant. I mean, you shouldn't try to control me or overthink things. I need my own space, and I hope you can respect my choices. As husband and wife, we should nurture and strengthen our mutual trust. I trust you not to betray me. And I hope you trust me in the same way. I hope you'll understand me better. I don't want to make things worse. I'm sorry, Layla. I don't intend to make you upset. I'm just concerned about you. Thank you for listening, dear. It makes me happy. Have a good time and remember to get some rest. I will. Don't worry. Good night, honey.
Good night. Oh, I almost forgot. Mike, I'd like to ask you a favor. What do you need, dear? I've been at home for quite a while, and I'd like to go back to work. Can I work at your company? I promise to work hard, and you can assign me any position. I'm glad you're interested. Let me arrange a job interview with the Human Resources Department for you. No, I don't like that. I hate interviews. Please let me work directly. That might be challenging, but which position are you interested in? I'd like a high-ranking position with executive authority, like an assistant director, director secretary, or department head. It's a bit complicated because the company currently doesn't have any openings at that level. Alternatively, you could consider working in the human resources department. Come to the company at 8 a.m. tomorrow, and I'll ask them to set things up for you. Human resources? I'm not too thrilled about that. Well, it's your choice. If you don't want to work, that's fine too. I can take care of you. No, I want to work. Okay, I'll work in the human resources department. Great. I'll make sure they pay attention to you. There's no need for that. Remember, I'm introverted. Ask them not to draw too much attention to me. I don't want people to know I'm the boss's wife. It might lead to assumptions. Who would dare say that? I'll make sure the person arranging your job keeps it confidential. But still, remind them to provide you with some support. Thanks, dear. You're the best. Anything for you, dear. How's work been lately, dear? Kind of boring. Oh? How so? Did they give you a lot of tasks? They handed me a stack of papers and numerous CVs, asking me to filter out suitable candidates for a job position. However, after I finished, they discarded it all and made me redo the entire task. I can't believe it. It took me three hours, and they just threw it away. Can you believe that? On top of that, they also handed me a pile of documents to review. I'm so exhausted. Why don't you take a break and then continue working? If you're tired, you should rest and recharge. If I take a break and they find out, my manager will come down on me. Ugh, I'm so frustrated. I'm a human being, not a machine meant to work endlessly. Even machines can fail, and humans can burn out. That's not good. However, I heard your manager report that you refused to do the work they assigned you after just one day. What's happening there? They're overloading me with work! I have the right to decline excessive tasks. I believe they're bullying newcomers. But they don't realize I'm not an easy pushover. They dare to assert their authority in front of me. Actually, the workload isn't that extensive. It's just a regular day's work for the Human Resources Department. You should give it a try. It's not just the volume, it's the way they treat me. They assign me heavy tasks and then gossip behind my back with malicious intent. They only seem to notice me when I'm resting, thinking I'm lazy. It's infuriating! It seems like you've had a tough day at work. Maybe everyone didn't get to know each other well at first. Over time, they'll understand your capabilities. You just need to demonstrate your true abilities to change their perception of you. I'm so drained, babe. They're so unreasonable, treating newcomers this way. Come on, dear. I'll schedule a spa appointment for you this weekend, a relaxing day to unwind after a stressful work week. But you'll have to put in your best effort in the next few days. Deal? Really? Promise? Absolutely. Deal. I'll be the hardest working person there. Don't push yourself too hard. Remember to take care of your health. I know. I will. Alright, now get back to work. Understood, boss. Honey! There's a new bag model that just came out today. I really like it, and it's a new model I don't have yet. Buy it for me, honey. 
If you're busy, give me the money and I'll buy it myself. Sure. How much is it? Only $4,150. What? Isn't that a bit expensive? Of course. It's just been released as a limited edition, and there are only 10 bags in the world. Quickly, transfer the money to me. Hurry up before it sells out. Um, I'm sorry, honey, but I don't have that much money right now. What? What do you mean you don't have that much money right now? Layla, the company is facing some financial difficulties, and all the money is being used to save the company. Right now, I only have $100 left in my account. Oh my god! Does that mean the company is going bankrupt? Not yet, but it's on the verge of bankruptcy. If we can't find a new investor soon, the company won't be able to survive. It's in a critical situation. Oh god, this is terrible! I know it's terrible. However, you don't need to worry, I will find another way. No matter what happens, I'll do my best to take care of you. Take care of me? How will you take care of me when my needs aren't met? What a disaster! How can I buy that bag now? Anna just told me her husband bought her that limited edition bag. You're my husband and you can't do that! I'm sorry, Layla, but I don't have that much money right now. I hope you can understand my situation. At this time, I don't expect you to help me, but I hope you can trust me and be patient. Endure this difficult time a bit, and things will get back to normal. Then, I'll buy any bag you want. Are you kidding me? By that time, the bag will be sold out. Even if you have the money, you won't be able to buy it anymore. I don't know what to do. I'm deeply sorry for disappointing you. I promise to make it up to you in the future. I need you to do it now, but you can't. You've let me down. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I understand. Then I'll see you at home for dinner. Whatever. Hey, Layla. Where are you? You came home early today. I'm having dinner with my friends. I told you I'd be home for dinner. Why did you go out with your friends already? What are you talking about? I didn't say I would stay at home and wait for you to have dinner. So I went out with my friends. Cook for yourself or order food. I'm not going home tonight. If you're not going home, where will you go? I went out with my friends and I'll be sleeping over at their house. I'm still angry about that bag incident. Because of you, I missed the chance to get the limited edition bag. But you can't just leave home and go out like this. Are you planning on leaving me alone? You talk too much, Mike. I can't even go out with my friends in peace. Then what's this, Layla? I found the document you keep in your drawer. A divorce petition? So, you found that document. Yes, it's divorce papers. What does this mean, Layla? Are you planning to divorce me? Did you decide to leave me as soon as you found out about my company's financial troubles? I was planning to give it to you tomorrow, but you found it already. Since you found it so soon, just sign it for me and we can go to court tomorrow. But why are you doing this? I love you deeply. I did everything for you. Everything? <laughs> You couldn't even buy me a bag, let alone do everything for me. That's because the company is facing difficulties. So what? I don't care much about your company. I'm worried about my own life. What concerns me is how to own that bag. Are you suggesting you've been with me only for my money all this time? What's wrong with that? Your wealth is what makes you valuable to me. Now that you're running out of money, what reason do I have to stay with you? What? How can you say that? Why can't I say that? I say what I want. Aren't you afraid that your actions will lead to a bad ending? <laughs> a bad ending? My bad ending is your company going bankrupt, and I have no source of income anymore. There's nothing wrong with securing my own future. Why should I stay with you and endure hardships when there are plenty of wealthy people willing to provide for me? What do you mean? 
Just because someone is rich and willing to spend money on you, you'd become their wife? That's right. Living a luxurious life, why should I refuse it? There's nothing wrong with that. Why should I stay with you and suffer? Huh. <laughs> I can't believe this. My own wife is revealed to be a gold digger. Excuse me? Who are you calling a gold digger? I'm referring to you, of course. You pauper! Your company is on the brink of bankruptcy, and you're still talking nonsense. What's wrong with being a gold digger? I'm just taking care of myself. You're truly beyond hope. Get out of my life, now! I'd rather die than stay with you. Sign the divorce papers and set me free. Fine, I will do that. We'll have nothing to do with each other from now on. Of course, I don't want to have anything to do with a pauper like you. Very well. I hope you don't regret your actions. <laughs> I never will. Mikey! Mike, are you there? What do you want? Stop contacting me. Mike, I'm sorry. I was stupid. After leaving you, I realized that you were the only person who treated me honestly. Also, I realized I still love you. Can we start over? As your wife, I won't ask for expensive things anymore. My wife can request anything from me. If I can afford it, I'll make it come true. I know you won't let me suffer. You still love me. Don't worry, I promise to be a good wife. What on earth are you talking about? Stop playing dumb, silly head. <laughs> You're still indulging me like before, which makes me very happy, dear. I think there's been a bit of a misunderstanding here. What do you mean? I said I will indulge my wife, not you, gold digger. What? I still love you so much. Don't you feel the same for me? <laughs> Look at the gold digger lying. I know full well that you trusted me for something. Get rid of that fake love right away. It's not what you think. You heard that my company has recovered and is growing rapidly, so you came to find me. How can a greedy person like you see a gold mine and not run to it? I'm not that kind of person. Please believe me. Well, you don't need to play the role of a pitiful person anymore. I know everything about you, including all the bad and dirty things you've done. I do not understand anything you said. I have never done anything wrong. <laughs> never did anything wrong? As soon as you heard that my company was in trouble, you immediately proposed a divorce. You threw me away because I no longer gave you money like before. It's not like that. The truth is, I was afraid that I would burden you during difficult times, so I chose to leave. You can think of such reasons! <laughs> Don't make me laugh. On that day of divorce, who were you with when you were texting me? I told you I'm with my friends! Oh, really? Or were you with that rich guy from a rival company? Impossible! I'm not. Still denying? So how did you get the bag so quickly? How did you buy it? That bag... A kind person bought it for me. A kind person? <laughs> you want to hide your dirtiness, but your sins will expose you. What do you know? You know nothing about me. I don't know anything. I just know you slept with that rich guy to buy that bag. What? How can you know that? Why not? As long as I want, I have a way to find out. You're filthy. Please, listen to my explanation. It's because of the bag. If you hadn't gone bankrupt, then I wouldn't have had to do it that way. Well, now you're planning to blame me for all the bad things you did. You are truly the worst of the worst. But that's only once. Don't talk so harshly. One time? You lie shamelessly. You've been dating that rich guy since before you met me. <laughs> and 
It's sad because I didn't know that until now. I should have learned more about you at the time. What? How do you know that? I have my ways. A gold digger like you doesn't need to know. You two are pathetic. That rich guy doesn't know how to do business, lives completely dependent on his parents, and has never made money himself. What useless rubbish. And his girlfriend, Miss Layla, is a gold digger. She is willing to do anything to achieve what she wants, even if it means sacrificing herself. <laughs> oh, you two are a perfect match. You jerk! How dare you say that to me? Watch your mouth! I can make your company go bankrupt immediately. You should be careful with your words. Oh my god, please don't do that to me. That's right. Be afraid and beg me for forgiveness. If you kneel down and apologize to me and promise to sign a contract to transfer the company to me, I will think again and forgive you. Please don't. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> I'm about to laugh to death. What is funny about that? It's funny because you think you got the drop on me, but actually, I'm the one who got the drop on you. What the hell? What does that mean? It means you're an idiot. Do you think that by stealing some of my company's confidential information, you can make me do anything? Yeah, right. Keep dreaming. So you do know this too. But what if so? I just need to sell it to a rival company. And your company will definitely go bankrupt. <laughs> How naive. I know you stole my company's information when you asked me to let you work in the company. Since then? How could you know? Of course. It's because of your carelessness. From the moment you told me you wanted to work, I knew something wasn't right. A lazy person like you, who only knows shopping and money, why would you want to work? You also wanted to work in a high position. <laughs> Come to think of it, you also have a great sense of humor. You said work is hard, you are forced to do a lot of work and the manager is difficult and scolds you all the time. But is that true? It's all true! Wrong answer. Our company has cameras. Didn't you know that? I can see all your actions during work hours. You just surf Facebook, look at clothing websites and chat with friends. What did you do that made you feel tired at that time? That's not what it seems. Oh, it's exactly what it seems, Layla. Surely planning to steal my company's confidential information has made you tired. When stealing information, you pay close attention to the camera, but it leaves traces at the scene. Not only that, my subordinates also saw you enter the record storage room. All of the above evidence and witnesses have shown that you, the person who has no authority to enter or leave the record storage room, but still can access the record storage room to get information, is the culprit. But I have a question. What do you want? I do not admit to that crime. So stubborn. Anyway, I have found the answer to my question. I thought about how you could get the access card to the record storage room, but I discovered the shocking truth. You seduced the deputy director and secretly took the magnetic card after sleeping with him. No wonder when I checked the access history of the record storage room, I only saw the deputy director's access. He was fired anyway. <laughs> Are you ready to go to jail now? You can't send me to jail. Why not? I'll tell Charlie. Charlie will protect me and cause your company to go bankrupt. Who is Charlie? Oh, you mean the useless tycoon. <laughs> he can't do anything to me. He doesn't have any authority. And he's weak. But since you trust and love him so much, I will let you both go to jail together. What? Don't do that. 
Please, don't. Please, Mike. I'm willing to do anything for you. Really? You will do everything for me, huh? That's right, Mike. I can do anything you say. Then surrender and go to jail. Be self-aware. No way, Mike. That's not the case. Anything but that. Well then, I'll call the police for you. They're on their way. Wait, Mike! Don't call the police. I don't want to go to jail. Prison is dirty and smelly. I won't be able to stand it. I think it's very suitable for filthy people like you. Have fun in jail. Goodbye, Layla. No, please wait. Mike! After that, Layla was captured while trying to flee across the border. Immediately after her arrest, Charlie was also called to the station for being an accomplice. Finally, with crimes of embezzlement and conspiracy to harm others, Layla will have to go to jail and pay a large sum of money. Charlie feared no better, as he also had to go to jail. There's nothing new on my side right now. Life continues and my company still develops over time. However, I have difficulty finding the love of my life because I have trust issues. I can't trust anyone else yet. But gradually, time will heal my wounded feelings, and life will become more beautiful. So at the end of this story, the wrongdoers have been appropriately punished, and the good people, although hurt in many ways, will not continue to suffer. As a human being, it's best not to engage in wrongdoing, and always remember that you reap what you sow.